we praise you, we worship you today. You are the great I am and you are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end and there's none like you, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you touch each heart today by the Spirit of the living God. That, Lord, that we hear your word in the simplicity of the gospel according to the Spirit of God, that you want us to hear it in today. Lord, I thank you for each person that is here and all those that are hearing my voice. And I ask, Lord, that you take them deeper into the things of you according to your will and your plan in each of our lives as we are individuals and loved by you completely. So, Father, I thank you and praise you. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Have your way in Jesus' name, all God's people say. Amen. So Amen. Hallelujah. Awesome. Yay. So I thought I was all set and ready to go one way, and obviously that just God's not always going to go the way that I plan for in the morning. So first of all, talking a little bit about my couple of weeks gone, um, God did a lot of things. I'm still needing to process them, but I came off the plane running. Um, me and my husband went darting up the next morning early to see mom and then darted to Lansing, got our grandkids, and we've had them ever since. So we've been very, very busy. Um, but I've had a little bit of time to reflect, but there's so much more, you know, when, when um, God wants to do what he wants to do. And uh, for some of you that don't uh, know about me is... I don't go every place. I go where I believe God is sending me. I just don't go because it's available. I really try to do what the Lord wants me to do. And the Lord's been opening up new doors of opportunity for me um, in Florida. And I've not asked for the doors. He's just opening them. But I'm walking through them and asking him to close the ones that are not of him. Um, but he's got a couple of pretty cool people down there that are pretty zealous for the ministry of the gospel. And they want to see... Uh, the, it grow from Michigan into the Florida region. So it's pretty cool. Um, and uh, But anyways, the night before I leave, now, I, when I'm down there, you guys all might think that I'm spending a whole lot of time with Pastor Rick and he's just mentoring me and pouring into me. That is not what happens. <laughs> right, Robin? Robin had her first experience down there with me for a week and that's not what happens. We were feasting from many different tables. Um pouring in and pouring into, they were pouring into us, we were pouring out, and you're just, you don't get a whole lot of rest. And, um, but it's exactly the way that God wants it to be. And so, um, anyways, this time, the last night before I come home, I always make sure that I get that, the last couple of hours of my time with Pastor Rick. And so I went over to his house the actual day that I was leaving because I ended up, my day extended one by one day because they asked me to stay to do some special ministry time with them individually with people. So, so I did that. And uh, so I whipped over to his house at 8.30 in the morning and had to leave that by 9.30 to get to the airport. And I had a list of different questions. And one of them was a scripture that I'm going to share with you today. Because I, I, brought this, I brought these words so by the Spirit, just like I do here. But it's a little bit different when you're away. I mean, you don't have the same faces staring at you. Um, they're all new faces that you don't know. You don't know anything really about their lives. Where I might know something about your life. So I really try my hardest if I know that, that you're struggling not to... Um, display that, right? Um, unless God tells me to. But so down there, um, the Holy Spirit met me Saturday morning at 5:40. He said, "Get up, I'm up." I couldn't sleep. I was up, and He just poured into me. And and as He was pouring into me, He spoke to my heart, which I said on Thursday night. And He said, "I will always be here with you. I will always." always give you words and wisdom that the enemy will not be able to counter no matter if you're standing in a Jewish faith church, a messianic, a, the fullness of Christ church, a Pentecostal, whatever it will be, I will always give you the word that I want to be given without your understanding. So because I've visited down there a few times and I've ministered in the Messianic Church, um, and this is, this is not Messianic religious. This is not people that are following 
just rituals and tradition, they are enriched by the Holy Spirit and embrace the New Testament right along with the Old Testament, but they still practice some of the things of the Old Testament, which I think is pretty cool, and I really believe in some of the things that they do. But we're not a Messianic church. But there's some things that I believe that we're going to learn as time goes on because I think they will benefit, especially young families and fathers um, and leaders of their homes because I think it's beautiful that, that their Sabbath is a Friday night as the sun sets to Saturday. And um, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with us meeting on Sundays and then meeting on... It's just got to make sure they're following the Word of God and the precepts and, and evangelizing for people to come unto Christ, right? It's, this is not a cult. This is a church that embraces the full gospel. But part of their, um, part of what they do is they have what, it's called something, but we call it communion. And, um, and so they sit down at their table and they light the candles, two of them, because two is important, because Jesus is always sent by twos and, and the disciples and all that. And there, there's a whole lot more to it, but I don't know it. But, and the wife starts it off, and then the husband brings up the children and teaches them about the things of God. But he blesses his children, and then he blesses his wife, and the wife blesses the husband, and, and then they, they break bread together and have grape juice or wine, whatever they do, prior to dinner. And, and so I really love that because the kids are taught their foundation of who they are in Christ and why they are who they are. So that when the, the waves come and, and the, everything comes, you know, this is a tradition that they still follow through with. And I think it's beautiful. I remember growing up and sitting down at a table, not all of us eating all over the place, and we would talk about our days. You know, we would pray even though we weren't really big church growers, we still would pray, you know, God is good. God is great. Let us thank Him for His food in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, so you know, that really stuck with me because I was a child learning that prayer. And so you think that our children, we may think that, oh, our children aren't that important. They're the most important. They are the most important. Suffer not the little children to come unto me. And so even if you don't feel like coming to church, you should make sure that you come for your children so that they learn how to press through or make sure that they get there because God is getting them ready for a future that is just going to be unstoppable when they're equipped with everything that God has for them. Yeah. And so I just thought that, you know, um, this is a really good thing and uh, I actually watched the teaching on it and printed some of the stuff and I told Robin I was going to send it to her because um, she's got eight children which means all of them are probably going to have children and so she, even though she wasn't able to do it she can pass it on. Um, but while I was down there I preached um, two different words. One was actually about the Bride of Christ um, and then the second Sunday was all about who he was, his names. And it was so empowered by the Holy Spirit, it just knocked my socks off. Um, I've not gotten to listen to them at all. I've not even gotten to listen to ours. Um, but I was so busy just trying to hear God down there like I am here. But you know, sometimes here, in your own territory, it's a little harder. And in your own territory, this is where uh, things are assigned to you to come against your life. So when you get out of the territory, you don't have those critters following you. They're, they're territorial critters, right? And so, um, demons. And so when you leave your territory, they have no right to you, you know. But there's other ones that want to a latch come on and get you oppressed and all that but there's a diff an actual difference when you you know leave your territory and you go into another one and you bring forth the Word of God and uh, you don't have all the battles I mean I had tons of battles this morning they started last night over and over and you'd think I would be used to it after 13 years in ministry on service days but I'm not and I get frazzled and I get frustrated and I text Jan this morning and I'm like you know, ask her a couple questions real quick as I'm driving down the road. And she goes, you sound like you're frustrated. I said, well, no, not with you, but yeah, typical service day, you know. And she goes, breathe him in and exhale you. Breathe him in and exhale you because the devil always wants our eyes to be on us, right? And us to talk about negative things and how, how we had to just press so hard and God isn't this. I mean, we need to lift up the name of Jesus. So what he's going to try to do is get you to lift up every other name but Jesus. Right. Amen? Right. So one of the... Um, I did not know this, but there was uh, some young people that came on Sunday and... Um, so I did this demonstration and 
And I pulled out the, the, the young people that were there um, that I did not know. I just pulled them out and I put them in the demonstration. First of all, is who we are in Christ, which you guys all have seen it several times. Many people don't get that visual. And so I, I don't know why I didn't plan on going here, but this is where I went. And so I had um, the people stand up and I explained salvation to them according to Ezekiel. 37, 36, I'm sorry, and how simple it really is and what it looks like, you know, but it has to come by Christ and Christ alone. And so they were a part of that. And then what I did is um, I went into another part that I'm going to talk to you about today, and I had them be part of that. And then, and then I went into the last part of the message, which was about who God is. And it was just and it was just such a powerful moving moment in my life. And there wasn't as many people there that we have here at River of Life, but it doesn't matter. God will set things up for one person to be saved. Little did I know and found out later that the people that I used, the one young man did not know Christ whatsoever. After service, the young man came and got me, and he says, can you come outside with me a minute? So I went outside, and I spoke with him, and then he came in, and his eyes, he's like deer, you know, in headlights. He's just like, what just happened? What's going on? This is, and he pulled Pastor Rick aside, and he pulled some other people aside, and, you know, he was really talking about, about what was happening, you know, to him, and he was, he was starting to get that Holy Spirit moving him like wow this I never heard such things like this before and I can come to church and sit here but there's so much more than that and so I, I didn't know this I just it's so important just to let God lead so for you guys this morning I was praying and I'm like Lord you met me down in Florida so hot and heavy like I didn't have to wait till the very last minute in Florida you know although you would get me up early but you just poured it out, poured it out. And here I got to fight. I always have to fight. I'm fighting right till the end until, you know, I feel like I got it. And sometimes I don't get it till just before service. And that was today. <laughs> now, was I seeking and pushing and praying? Absolutely. I was up at 6 o'clock this morning trying to already press in. God woke me up at 4, started speaking to him about today. So it's not that I just don't try because I really am. But it's always by my spirit. And so what he said to me today, and it was while we were in our prayer circle at the end of our, our, our um, pre-service this morning, and he said to me, um, he said, Let, he goes, what about the healing waters? So I want to tell you the story behind the healing waters. It's in Ezekiel 40, 47, that's where we're going to go. But I want to tell you something about this word. This word, the next morning, I got up and the Holy Spirit prompted me to go and read it again. So I went and read it again and I read through the parts because Robin and I had been discussing the before parts of the healing water. We were talking about the 1,000 cubics and how Ezekiel was taken out by the Spirit and he was shown these things. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start there, but then when we get over here, you'll understand something I want to explain to you something about spirit. So in verse 1 it says, Then, so this is Ezekiel, Then he brought me back to the door of the temple, and there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple toward the east. Now I had just heard about this while I was down in Florida, that there had to be water that was flowing through the temple because of all the blood and the blood sacrifices. You would have to have a, a source for water. I've never thought about that before, but it's so important when it comes to the things of God, right? And so, so this from the threshold of the temple toward the east. For the front of the temple faced east. The water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He brought me out by way of the north gate. And he led me around the outside of the outer gateway that faces the east. And there was water running out on the right side. And when the man went out from the east, so a man came out from the east with a line in his hand, and he measured 1,000 cubics. He brought me through the waters, this man. The water came up to my ankles. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters, and the water came up to his knees, my knees. 
Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me to the water to, through, and the water came up to my waist. And again, he measured 1,000, and it was a river that I could not cross. And the waters was too deep, water in which must, one must swim, a river that could not be crossed. He said to me, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river. When I returned, there along the bank of the river were many trees on one side and the other. So I'm going to stop there for just a minute because this has significant meaning about the measure of, of the, um, the thousand cubic and how the water continued to go up. Robin and I were discussing that because of different things that were going on and about it's just the move of God, you know, it measured the same, but yet it was deeper, measured the same, but yet it was deeper. All right, so now when he's brought up, he's put on the, the bank of a river where many trees were on one side and the other. Then he said to me, the waters flow toward the eastern region. Go down into the valley and enter the sea. When it reaches the sea, it bring, its waters are healed. So I'm going to stop there for just a second. So the next morning when I read this, I went, oh my gosh, I was so out of contents, contents of what, what I preached because of a God. So what happened is when I got to Pastor Rick's house, I texted him and said, hey, we really need to talk about, you know, yesterday's service because of the visual that he gave me. But the visual that he had given me and the way that I brought forth this word is going to be different than how I bring it forth today. And so because of that, I wanted to be sure that I was okay. And I knew you could not deny the Holy Spirit there. But it was so not the content, and that's what the living word does. Right. The living word brings forth life out of the word, and he brings it to the simplicity of the gospel into each and every one of our lives. And so what they needed to see and hear was different than what we are going to need and hear today. So I wanted to make sure that I did not make a mistake or that I needed to be corrected. I said, Pastor Rick, if, if I correct me, I'm here for direction, correction, encouragement, whatever you have for me. I, I want it because I don't want to mislead God's people ever. Even if I make mistakes along the way. God is God and I am accountable to Him to a greater degree than you are because of where God has placed me. And it says that in the Word of God. So I'm not lifting myself up, but I want you to understand that when I stand up here, God sends me anywhere. It's not about me. It really isn't. I've, I've been scared of ministry since He called me into ministry. And, you know, but I've watched Him do miraculous things and miracles and signs. And I love what He has done. And so, but he's done it for a purpose. And so you guys are all here today for a purpose. And God wants to pour into you to a greater degree than maybe you want him to today. Maybe you're just in a bad mood and you're off thinking in your own mind. If that's the case, I call your mind to order right now in the name of Jesus. I call the joy of the Lord on your life so that that spirit of oppression has to leave. He's not welcome here. Amen. All he does is cause inner with what God wants to do in a person's yeah. life. So Lord, we open our hearts and our minds to you and you alone in Jesus' name. So trees, of course, in the word of God represent people. So as Ezekiel was placed down, here he was looking at all these trees. And they're on the bank of the river. And then he said, the water flows toward the eastern region. It goes down into the valley and enters the sea. When it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. And it shall be that every living thing that moves, wherever the river goes, will live. And it shall be that every living thing that moves, wherever the river goes, will live. And there will be a very great multitude of fish. Because these waters go there. For they will be healed. And everything will live wherever the river goes. It shall be that fishermen will stand. From e, e something. I can't say those words. They will, they will be placed for spreading their nets. 
places for them to spread their nets. Their fish will be the same kind as fish of the great sea, exceedingly many. So, I know that the name of this church is River of Life. And we know that the river of life flows from the throne of God. This name was given to River of Life by Michael Mannon. And he was reading the word and he was reading in Revelation and we were looking for a name for the church. And he brought this one to us and this is the one that we felt was the one that we were to go with. We did not have no idea that it was part of God's will. Because we didn't know that God was making our thinking line up with his will. But that's what the word says. We come to River of Life and there in that other room is setting a river. We come to this building that was destitute and lifeless. But there was one picture that was left in this building and it's in the sanctuary. And somebody chalked it. It's a chalk painting. And it's a river. We knew instantly when we seen the river that this was the place we were supposed to be. And we stepped out in faith and rented the building. We should not have been able to afford the building. Plus, the utilities asked Dewey. He was a bit shocked that we were going to do it. And, but God provided. There's an eagle that is in that picture. But if you look a little closer and you look into the clouds, there's an outline of an eagle. To me, that was the Holy Spirit. I didn't know it for two years. My nephew found it. He goes, look up there. That's a picture of an eagle. But we always knew that the Holy Spirit was watching over us. Well, guess what, you guys? We are the river. There's healing within us. And we are to go out and we're to bring life to every living thing. So that every living thing will live. Versus just go out and live life with people that are living life too. But we're carrying the presence of Almighty God. And it's only increasing in us by His Spirit. And so it's important that we understand that as, as, as this river was growing, it was still a thousand cubic feet. Measured a thousand, but it was up to my ankles. Measured a thousand more. Okay, so now it's up to my knees. Measured a thousand again, so now it's up to my hips. And now... You can't walk in it, you have to swim. I believe that's the increase that will come to certain churches that are doing what God is asking them to do. But it will definitely come to the body, the encompassed body of Christ. Because God is going to do it, but we have a part to play. Everybody's went through a tough year. Nobody, everybody's trials and tribulations were different. But the thing is, is we got through it. God promises he'll never leave us or forsake us, so we did get through it. But what's important now, what are you going to do with what you got through? Are you going to hold it as a memory and live in part of what you got through? Or are you going to release it and use it for the glory of the kingdom of heaven to help someone else get through it? Amen. And so this is the thing that every single river was connected to the sea. So, Dan, would you stand up, Dewey, Edie, Tammy, and Dave? Will you guys so just all stand up? I want you to put your hand on this all the way around. Okay, and so you guys are all connected to the sea, but you're sent out from there to go, right? And so, but you're also going to the sea, which you're bringing fresh water into a dead sea. <coughs> Right? You're bringing life into a dead sea. This, today, what God gives me is the world. That sea is the world that is full of salt, but no life. That's dead, that there's really no life in it. This is a picture of salvation as a person. And as people with the living, healing spirit of God in them touches a life, it brings life to that sea, to that person. But it's not just a person, it's a world. It's a community. And it's something that God has imparted into you and I because of the spirit of the living God that lives inside of us. Amen. Thank you, guys. And so nobody is without an assignment from the spirit of God. All of us are called to go out in our sphere of influence. I don't, it doesn't matter if it's your family, if it's where you work. If it's your church, because there's some saved people in churches, you know, that don't know that they're not saved. I'm not even sure this young man knew that he was saved or not. I, he just didn't know. And there's many, many people like that doing the right thing, the good thing, the thing that, 
you know, we believe we're supposed to do, but it's always important that you know who you are in Christ. Because if you don't know who you are in Christ, then you're not going to reach out to the people that don't know who they are in Christ. Because you're not going to have, you're not going to operate from the confidence of the Spirit of God within you. You're going to try to get through it with your own confidence, which sometimes comes across as judgment. And point your fingers at somebody. When you work in the confidence of the Holy Spirit and it comes out in love and it comes out in wisdom and it comes out by Him, it opens a door for that river to go into that sea, if you'll call it that, and they will receive living water. And so what happens is it says that every place that it goes, it shall be that every living thing that moves wherever the river goes will live. So these, these things are already living, but they're not. And so your touch, your presence, your prayer, your, your saying hello or giving them a hug or making them feel like they have value is going to open doors just through that so that they can start to experience Amen. The river of love, the river of God, the river of life. And so I believe today that God wants to do great things. And they talk about the great multitude of fish. It says, there will be a great multitude of fish because these waters go there. So in the Dead Sea, where there's no life, all of a sudden, all these rivers come in to the Dead Sea, come into the world, come into David's life, come into your life, you know, and you're just in a funk. But all of a sudden, all these places are bringing life to you. It's never one person. It's one spirit. The same spirit that rose Jesus from the grave lives inside of you and lives inside of me and wants to live in every single person. For God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son. Right? And so I'm telling you this because there's things that we need to do out there. The kids' hands on the wall might not have seemed important to you, but it is important to God. It is important that these little kids are going to see that they're important. When we painted all of this and put the new carpet in out there, I was sitting back there in the sanctuary, <coughs> and I looked out into the hallway, and I was praying and asking God about the ceiling of the church. And I'm like, okay, what's it going to cost? What are we supposed to do? Are we going to do the whole thing? What do we want to do? And I looked at the wall, and I heard him say, do not paint over that wall. I said, okay. Because the building's not important. The hands are. Right. The color of the walls aren't important. It's the different color of the smeared little handprints out there that we want all perfect, but they're not perfect. But it, it doesn't matter. They represent a world. Amen. A world to come. Amen. And so if we don't lift up and pour into them little kids and love on them and teach them their heritage and bring life to these little seas that God has given us that are so ready to be influenced, you don't have to know everything. You just have to know Christ and let Him work through you and live according to the way He's asking you to live. Because those kids are going to grow up, trust me, and live like you did. And they say, and the word says, if they do grow up and stray, they'll come back. I've seen that happen with many families. My kids weren't raised to grow up in the Lord. Some people were blessed and grew up in the Lord. I was not, but my mom did get us to church here and there, and we lived close to a church, and we would walk sometimes. But if something better came along, we would go off and do that. So as an adult, I did the same thing. Well, maybe I'll go, ah, oh, this is better. I'd rather do this. This is more fun, and not go. This is not a guilt trip about being at church. But I want to tell you that the world that is before us are our children. That's who we be need to be putting our hands on and praying for every day as a body of Christ, whether you know their names or not. Because we need the multitude of the fish within them to live. Because they're going to reach nations and worlds we will never see. Some of us won't be here. But at the same time, don't forget about each other and about your family members and about the world. God put healing in you and in me to go out and heal the living. 
They're living. They're living. They're not dead. And there's an anointing on every one of our lives to do exactly what God wants. He, I have been meditating for years on this scripture not to worry about, make up your mind beforehand not to worry about what you're going to say. When you stand before people, basically, that I being God will fill your mouth with words and wisdom that the enemy that wants to cause problems will not be able to. That's my interpretation. But what it says is he will fill your mouth with words and wisdom that the enemy will not be able to contradict nor resist because it's the word of God and every knee will bow to Jesus and he is the word. I experience that a couple times a week here. He fills my mouth with words and wisdom. I have to make up my mind not to worry about it because the first thing you want to do is worry. When you go into new churches, you have no idea what their denomination is and the Lord just puts you before people that you don't know. It's a foreign it's a foreign ocean to me. But I am the source that's flowing from the temple to go into that sea of living things and bring life to them. Amen. Well, so are you. So I just want to give that to you today. I want to encourage you with that today. Don't go by the way that you feel. Feelings aren't going to get you anywhere but down in the dumps. And you're going to feel rejected. That is not true because we know that comes from the devil. You're going to feel all alone. And maybe you feel all alone because you are all alone for a while. But maybe because God wants you there so that you can hear him clearer. Ask him. Or maybe it's something that we're doing. We're not reaching out like we should be doing. You know, I don't know. But I know that God is good. His goodness is is running after you and it's running after me and it's for the living it's for the living my dad my grandpa would say don't bring me any flowers when I die don't be putting no flowers on my grave and don't send them don't give them to me if you want to give me flowers you give them to me while I'm living because that's what makes the difference I'm dead I have no clue I'm I'm with Jesus I've never forgot that because it's true Amen. Well, we were so close at one time. Well, what about the one time? Yes, our seasons change. But you still have a connection. We're the living, and we need to pour into each other. Amen. And we're connected to one another. But we're also connected to many other people. Amen? Yeah. So God is good. Hallelujah. So we're going to close with the goodness of God. I'm going to pray. Uh, don't shut it off. I'm going to give a couple words, and then we're going to worship. So, Father, first of all, I thank you for who you are. You're the great I am, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. I pray, Father God, that your anointing would just touch this word, that your anointing will go out by the Spirit of the living God, and that you will produce what you want to come forth from it. I thank you, God, that you are Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end, and I know, Lord, that your plan is good. So, God, we surrender the rest of our day to you. We ask, Lord, <coughs> excuse me, that you use it for your glory. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Okay, so, real quick, Rachel, if you just stand up for me. Uh, Reva, would you put your hands on her? Would you stand up behind her, please? Yes. Rachel, I just want to release healing from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. That God loves you so, so, so very much. We both know from talking in the natural that the enemy is always trying to deter you from the things of God. You know you're gifted by God. And I'm here to declare it today by the Spirit of the living God. That is why a lot of your warfare comes. So that you never stepped out into the fullness of what God has for you. But get ready because he's the mountain mover. And he's going to take care of things for you. They might not be the way that you want them to look like, but trust him in the making of what he's going to do. Just trust him. I feel like the Lord says surrender everything, all of everything, your thoughts, your plans, everything, and just let God produce what he wants to produce in your life. So Lord, in Jesus' name, I just release a healing over her body now, over her mind. Father, I come against tormenting spirits that just want to torment the crap out of her. We tell them to cease. We bind them right now and we tell them they have to leave. They have no right to her in Jesus' name. 
I come against depression and I tell it it's got to go. Robin, would you go back and, and get, get by Rachel as well? Robin, I'm going to ask you to continue to pray for Rachel and press in with that because I believe that uh, it just needs to happen and she needs to walk out of here feeling completely different. Amen? So with Reva being your backup there, being your covering, there we go. Thank you, Lord. Rob, um, I, you, uh, you did well stepping out and getting some old business taken care of. And because God uh, equipped you to do it and you relied on Him, you didn't sink, you swam. Amen. And that's a beautiful thing. And the Lord loves the fact that you're cleaning up business from old so that you can take care of new business that He's going to bring into your life. And, and so I just, I just want to encourage you to not look back. I know it's hard sometimes, especially if you look back and you think of the losses that you have maybe from your own decisions. But even in that, God has a plan for you. I mean, you're not left out just out to dry. I mean, he sent Mr. James and your sister Amanda down to love on you and bring you up to Manistee. That was a plan of God. And so it's, it's amazing, you know. And so his provision is coming to you the way that it's supposed to come. And he says, don't worry about stuff. It'll come when you're ready. If you try to produce it yourself, you'll get ahead of God. And, and you'll do it in your own strength and energy and then you won't be able to produce anything except frustration and then you'll be wanting to go back to old things. So walk slow, walk in faith, and let God produce in you as He's ready to produce in you. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is good. Lori, for you today, you need to... Uh, you, you ever see um, the cartoon that used to be on and it would be the face and the face would be like this? So I pray that over your life right now. I don't know what brought you your frown today, but God says it's not of Him. The Lord says that we cannot control everything and we cannot internalize everything. Like, you, you, you move mountains with your joyful personality and with your smile. And what the devil's trying to do is bring bring you into a judgment of others and God is saying no and you're fighting it because you don't want to ever judge anybody um, but because you're in a battle right now that's your battle and so out of that judgment comes rejection and you feel abandoned and in Jesus name I'm just going to take authority over that because you are a river of life that's supposed to go out and bring healing even to the living but if we're one that need to be brought back to life then you need to be able to receive that life coming from other people as well and so if there's no shame in that says the Lord there is no shame in feeling weak and a bit feeble and like I don't even know what feeble means so I hope it ain't a bad word but but if there's no shame in feeling like you're just not strong enough and you should be you should be able to do it you're a Christian you've been that your whole life no you shouldn't be able to because that means that's when our strength has came up and rose up and took over our spirit when you walk in the spirit of God that that's when you're walking in the life of God and you release life to many so I pray right now if there's anything that has come against you to steal your joy, I tell it to release you right now in Jesus' name that has come against your mind. I tell it it's got to be released, but you've got to let it go. You've got to let it go and believe truth over a lie because I believe that's, what, that's what's behind it. There's a lie that came. There might be some truth in it, but the addition of the voice of the enemy that comes with a little bit of truth without understanding produces the lie. We believe the lie. We receive the lie. The re and once we receive the lie, now the lie goes into our emotions and now it affects our body. And so that's what I see over you right now, that there, a lie came, maybe some truth was in it, but without the full understanding, the enemy's voice came. He came out of past hurts, past wounds, spoke to you, and put you in this place. And so God says, not today. Amen. He's going to make you smile. Yes. Amen. So, yeah. So I just release that, but you have to receive it. I can release words all day long, but if you don't embrace them and receive them, you don't get you don't get it. It says, if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you'll receive a prophet's reward. What that means is, when somebody speaks to you, rather me or anybody else, and it is a prophetic word from the Lord, 
If you receive it, you re you'll receive the reward, the truth, the, the blessing. You'll receive the freedom, what that word will bring. But in that, even the thing about torment, tormenting spirits, and things that want to hang on to us, we get so used to them. They become part of us, we don't even realize it. And they hide, and then they come up, and we start living in those things. And you've got to release them. You have to let go of those things. Because we've given ourselves over to the empowerment because we won't let go. We're hanging on to them. And so I just want to give you that little bit of teaching right there, just right now. So, all right, guys. God bless you. Let's stand up.